I hope you're as ex excited as I am to talk about feature engineering. We've done a lot to get to this point. So first, we're going to talk about times between date times, and that's going to help us as we create other features. So notes on times between date times in SQLite. So SQLite uses Julian day, uh, which is actually the number of days since November 24th, uh, 4714 BC. Uh, not all SQL servers use this as a measure, but they will have some uh, measure of time that is a reference point. And so basically calculating the difference between all dates can be relevant in modeling. How long since somebody has last logged in? What is their tenure total since their first purchase? How long are they going between purchases? Um, and so you get to be a little creative in how you create your features. And a lot of times that becomes your denominator. So let's hop in and start with this first piece of feature engineering. All right, so let's get rid of the material from the last module. And so we're working with date times. Okay, so we had seen previously that we could do select date now and get the date back. So today is 1231. Okay, so now if we look at the Julian day, we get this number back. And so that is the number of days since 4714 BC. And so we can use this and in other SQL Server browsers, uh, it's actually easier. You can do a date diff, um, you can do, you know, date diff months and have it give it to you in months. And here we have to more manually uh, do these calculations, which is good because you're gonna have a better understanding of how these things work. So if I wanted to understand the difference between, um, first conversion date from the customer table, I would subtract the number of days between now and now minus the conversion date. So we'll call this days since conversion and that'll give us till today okay so I'm just seeing a bunch of Julian days uh, let's look at first conversion and see if these make sense Okay, so this is 2003 and it's been, you know, almost 5,600 days. And then if we go to people who are a little bit more recent, 2017, late 2017, we see that it's about 432 days, which makes sense because it's been a little bit over one year and there's 365 days in a year. Okay, so we know that this is working, but now, you know, we may not want to actually use days as our measure, although we could use days as our denominator. Um, but a lot of times we wanna be able to bucket people by the number of months tenure that they've been here or the number of years tenure that they've been here. And so now, if we wanted to get an understanding of how many years they've been here, I could divide this by 
two five. That's roughly making a um, a change for the fact that there's a leap year. Oh, and we'd need to say years since conversion, right? So fifteen point three years since uh, since they first converted. That is correct. And again, the people who have been here longer. Twenty seventeen, they've been here. So this person's been here almost two years and we see that. So we could also cast this as an integer. And now I'm getting those truncated years. If I wanted to get it in terms of months, I can multiply by 12, right? Because there's 12 months in a year. Okay, and let's go to some people that are easier to get an understanding of whether or not this is correct. I saw some 2017 down here. 2017. Okay, so 2017, February, it's the end of December right now, 22 months. That makes sense, right? Because in two months, um, they'll have been here for two years. And so that is how we'd work with you know, doing calculations, casting as an integer, and taking the difference between some dates. And so there will be a number of homework problems where you guys will do this to get the calculation for the differences between some other dates. Okay, so now those dates that we created, we're going to use that to standardize some variables where it makes sense. Okay, as I said in the intro video, we wouldn't wanna compare total logins or number of visits to the site for somebody who's been here 15 years versus somebody who's been here two months. Um, because it would end up just looking more like an indicator of people who have been here longer rather than their actual engagement. All right, so we still have our function here with, you know, the people's first conversion date until now. So that's their total tenure with big ecom, right? And so now we want to find a relevant variable for creating a feature. So let's let's take a look at some of our variables and find a relevant one. So their commission in August divided by their tenure wouldn't make sense. Okay. The number of times they visited the blog would make sense and the total number of logins that they have would make sense. Um, number of product returns might make sense as well um, and total sales. So these are all variables that we could potentially divide. All right, so let's look at logins per month. I'm going to copy and paste this and then we're going to get rid of the cast as integer but we still need our denominator and we know that we hadn't updated this but this is months since conversion and so now actually what we're looking at is logins per month. And 
And so it's called total logins. Okay, and so we see that on average, this guy, since 2005, his average login rate is 24 times per month. That's great. Um, and so we see that there are people who log in less than one time per month. Some people log in 15 times per month. And so this is great. And we could even cast this as an integer. And we could count the customer ID. And then group by this guy. All right. Okay, so we see that the most popular is people logging in once per month. We also have a bunch of nulls in here, and this is probably because they don't have a first conversion date. So we could say where first conversion date is not null. And then instead of ordering by the count to see which is more popular, we could order by this guy, and then we'll get it in order of logins per month. Voila. Oh, but we don't want descending here. Or at least I don't. because there's only one customer that's logging in 1,400 times per month. That's called an outlier, who we'd probably want to remove for modeling purposes. Okay, so. All right, there could probably also be customers who don't have any logins. So let's see, where total logins is not null. Okay, and so I hope this is showing you how I think through, up. Oh, this should be an and. I hope this is showing you how I think through these different problems. Okay, so now we see there's 28,000 customers who log in less than once per month because again, we cast as an integer, so it is truncating that to zero. So it's not actually zero, it's that on average, they log in less than once per month. Um, and we can sort of see this distribution of data. And in general, it's getting smaller as the logins go up and very few people are logging in more than, you know, a little over a hundred times a month. <laughs>